Good morning, everybody. Oh, I know. They're ready for breakfast, aren't they? Look at those guineas fighting. Oh, when you see the guineas fighting, what are they doing? Look at them fighting. They're not happy. Say good morning. All right. Let's get these guys some food. Yeah, we'll get it back in. These Freedom Rangers, these, uh, well, about 40 of these guys, they're getting processed this coming weekend. They get a couple more days. And then it's all over. Well, good morning, everybody. It's been a while. This is Thad with Climber Ridge Farm. Uh, just checking in we've uh, had a crazy spring i was gonna record all the time and uh lost my voice for a while when all the allergies came in and uh we've just been playing catch up ever since but uh just gonna show you around the the farm a little bit today what's going on i'll try to get some footage uh my man nolan he's out here with me right now where did he go there he is hey buddy You say hey. So uh, we're out here feeding the feeding the birds this morning, aren't we? Is it fun? Can you say hey. 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 So uh, these are our second batch of Freedom Rangers, and I'll uh, flip the camera around so you can see them. So here they are. Um, there's a hundred ten ish in this group um okay buddy sunday we are butchering 40 of these guys uh, 40 of them are a couple weeks ahead there was some some kind of a freak accident in shipping and we lost a significant amount in shipping um so the hatchery they were awesome about it sent us another batch uh, but they were about two weeks younger so part of these guys will um <clears throat> hit the process and equipment this weekend and then the others will uh they'll be in a couple more weeks a few people have asked um you know often you see the the chickens raised in the uh chicken tractors and that's the only space they ever get and that's not a bad thing um depends on everybody's setup everybody's is different and they get moved you know constantly so they're getting fresh grass but uh these guys we wanted them to have a little more space so we set up this netting this can be electric uh, we don't have a charger hooked up to it we don't really have predator issues out here with our great pyrenees around all the time or most of the time i should say um but with that said, it gives him a lot larger space and it buys us a little time of moving this every three to four days versus every single day just moving the tractors and they have limited space. So this gives them a little more sunshine, a little more area to roam. And uh, for us, it's worked out really well. It doesn't work for everybody. But um, yeah, that's where we're at letting this top field rest a little bit longer before the cows come back on it. We've had to separate cattle. We've had heifers that are eight months old going into heat and uh, bull, all of our bulls, we had to get out of the fence. So they're hanging out up here. Well, then one of them we were weaning. He didn't like it so much as mama could hear him. So he, she's in there with him because she uh, kept getting herself out and up here. So we just put her up, but, uh, been a lot going on with that we'll go check out the pigs they just got moved to a new spot last night we had to move them at the very north side of our property um, 
basically because they just were too interested in all the other animals out here. They were not respecting the electric fence like they should. Uh, we moved them about three weeks ago up there and we've had zero problems since. So that seemed to uh, have solved that issue some. So um, I'm going to show you guys an area, you, if you had seen any of our videos from back uh, late winter, um, you'll recognize this area, but this was an experiment somewhat, uh, just an area we wanted to test out. Um, back late fall, I had forestry mulch this. This stuff was so thick, you could not walk through this area. Really, 10 feet in front of your face, you couldn't see what was coming. Um, just one, two, three, four inch saplings every six inches growing and uh it had just been neglected for probably nine to ten years overall um but we had unrolled hay there was no grass by the way there was nothing growing this was just dirt and uh logs and limbs and just debris from the mulching and stuff everywhere uh, but we left it how it was brought the cattle up here back in the winter unrolled hay just to see what would happen and uh Anyways, this stuff was about three to four feet tall a week ago. I had to mow it down. Uh, but now we're going to run the Berkshire pigs through here. And uh, we're just wanting to see what they're going to do with it. So I'll flip this around so you can see it. So here we are. Um, and I'll try to find a, a photo where I could lapse this back. And you can see what this was like before. Um, but from this spot, I'll, uh, we're going to ride up here and... I'm sure the pigs are ready for their breakfast and um, I'll show you what it looks like up top. All right, so here we are. We actually moved them last night, and uh, it's crazy. So this area that you're seeing that's the most torn up, closest to me, this never um, this never started growing grass, uh, maybe slightly here and there. These were heavier, saturated areas where I don't even know if I unrolled these bales. There were a couple of days where it was just going to be super rainy back in the winter. I just had a couple of round bales sitting out. And so that's what a lot of this deeper litter stuff is. But as you can see, the pigs, they'll still till it up. They're going to work through it. Uh, and that's just organic matter that's going to break down. It's going to do nothing but uh, help build our soil up even better. Um, so I'm not upset about that one bit. Uh, but it's pretty cool just to see, I mean, a one pass over the winter uh, that this had established somewhat of a bed of of grass that quickly um, this area they were in didn't really have as much grass growing I just moved in from this section but it had saplings everywhere and uh, they did a pretty good job they were over here for about two weeks and um, they did pretty good you can see that versus uh, some of the areas behind it what it would look like but uh, these um, these waterer bowls it just happened that these um, these red bowls fit perfect in my old Jeep tires and they can't spill it. They're even able to lay down in it. So uh, we keep these out for them. Have to top these off and get some water. And then uh, the shelter back here was a, uh, it was actually intended for our goats in the past. It's a little wonky um, just because it it gets moved a lot it's not sitting level but it doesn't have to and it still works uh it was mostly built from pallets 
that our metal roofing came on for our garage apartment. Uh, so I saved those, we recycled them and uh, used some cedar trees as skis. And it's not the prettiest thing, so don't judge me on that, but it works. Uh, use those cedar trees as skis and I just hook up the tractor around this front bar and I pull this thing all over the place wherever we need it. And uh, there's no telling what it might house next. We've had calves in it. Goat kids born in this thing and moved around. I've put panels around it a few times to close it in. And uh, who knows, sheep might use it sometime. It might stay designated for pigs. There's no telling. But uh, it's worked out pretty well. And the key for us with moving our animals around and moving everything around has been mobility and multi-use. If it's got more than one use, it's probably something we're gonna keep around and make the most of. But these guys are pretty happy pigs, I would say. They're about, uh, they're about four months old now. But they've done pretty well with the electric wire just one strand. A lot of people can't believe it when they're pulling. They That's our driveway right here. That's about halfway down our driveway. It's like, uh, you have some loose pigs up there. No, they're not loose. There's a wire. It's just hard to see. All right, guys. Well, thanks for uh, just tagging along with us for a few minutes this morning. Uh, we're going to work on more content, getting it your way. Um, but we have had a ton go on. And we just got beef back. We took three of our Irish Dexters a few weeks ago to the butcher. And, um, and we're in the triad area of North Carolina. And uh, so we went through the steps to go ahead and get our meat handler's license. So we're able to sell that by the cut right off the farm, farmer's markets, and uh, different things like that, as well as our poultry exemptions. So we can process, raise, and uh, sell our poultry right here off the farm too. So uh, stay tuned, we're gonna share more about the beef. It was uh, has been an <clears throat> awesome experience so far, just being able to meet the people that are buying it, meet the families that we're feeding. And uh, it, it's kind of a full circle when that all happens. Uh, but anyways, thanks again for checking us out and we will uh, see you soon.